martial arts since um, the early 70s, and I have black belt some old things. But um, my niche has been uh, tournament karate, kickboxing, etc., uh, with emphasis on kicking. So we'll be doing a little bit of that today. But Grandmaster Rankin also has any uh, do a thing with uh, some movie stunt fight. So I'm going to explain to you the differences between the two. Because fighting, we don't telegraph. And then there is movie acting techniques where you actually show what you're going to do, show your intentions. Because you have to have the, you're, basically it's telling a story with pictures. Does that make sense? Right. Okay, so everybody come on in to participate. Uh, give yourself some space. Uh, you guys are, you need to come in with some. Let's, um, <laughs> Sam, you guys in the work, y'all come on up because the rest of the All right, see how many we got. Um, you're right here, sir. I'm going to back you up the step. You come up. You're good for your act. You come up, sir. And you come up. All right, so you kind of stay. Y'all come up a little bit more. Yes, now, you guys understand the method of lining up. You guys want to get in somewhere to give yourself some space. Now, the first thing we're going to do is work on a reaction, how to settle a technique. How many of y'all seen a Jackie Chan movie? Everybody, pretty much. Now, if you haven't, go home. <laughs> uh, now, Jackie Chan obviously is a remarkable martial artist who does his own stunt work and has for decades. But what, you, what a lot of people don't know is he has like a 30 man uh, black belt team of professional stunt people that, from, by, from watching them in their movies, they don't get paid enough because, oh my God, uh, some of the stunts that they've done is incredible. But one other thing you understand about movie stunt fighting is that if you're a stunt man, that's your job. You don't want to get hurt because you can't feed your family. So there's certain safety protocols involved in it so that you're um, you know, selling the, the, the thing on film but not getting injured. Make sense? Yes, now, uh, one of the things is reactions. We're going to work on that. Now, reactions and timing are important. So, for example, uh, if I were to do this strike from this direction, you're going to snap your head that way. Right? Now, if you do it too early, you go ahead and snap your head. It looks ridiculous. Right? If you do it too late, it looks ridiculous. You understand? Know yes, sir. If you sir. snap your head in the wrong direction, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> you, you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, we're going to work on those basic angles first. So, number one is going to be that. It's like, let's say, my stepmother right back there, she hollered for you, and you go, what? Snap your head that way real fast. Look, look. You see. <laughs> so, you ready? Does that make sense? So from that angle, the camera setting that way would look appropriate. Now, if the camera was here, you would see that I clearly missed. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So, camera angle is important. Now, one other thing you'll hear is uh, uh, find your mark. Now, in my class, we have dots on the floor for how you guys line up. Right? That would be your mark and your position for the camera person. Now, uh, and we noticed last night the guy that uh, was, was uh, uh, going up for fifth degree. He did a lot of his work off camera. So we, had, we could just guess at what he did. We didn't know what he was doing for sure. Does that make sense? So having your position is real important too. So we, I want to give you this basic six count. Number one would be snapping your head in that direction. Okay, one. Now, over at. Yes, you want to be? Yes, sir. Yeah. Knee oil. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Everybody, ready? One. Now you're going to go the other way. Two. Good. Let's review that. One. Two. Yeah, your neck might get sore from this. Now, guys, try not to try to avoid this. All right. <laughs> One way to help is if you have your partner to push you. You know, we're doing it at a speed to where there's no injury. Make sense? Yes, sir. Yeah, I don't listen, don't, don't do it for me. I'll do it for you. But right. so you see how you had to move natural? Now, you move the same way as a memory. Make sense? Yes, sir. All right. Number one. Ready? One. Two. Now three, you're gonna look up real fast and stagger back a little bit. Yes, sir. That's it. Head first. Yes, sir. You try. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he's got the biceps for the team. Yeah, he's got the good look. <laughs> so one, two, three. Now four, 
Let's pretend that you got a bungee cord tied to your OB. What's OB? Your belt. What's an OB? It's the first time I heard it, yes sir. Okay, what's, what's this for me? Pack one. Yes sir. Yes, you do Korean terminology. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's what you for. Yes sir. So we got <laughs> the bungee cord here to yank. Now the idea is you want to hit him right between the eyes with both butt cheeks. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, grab your belly. Uh, yes, sir. Leave the ground. Leave the ground. Yeah, you can't hit, you're not that tall. There's, there's his head. There's your butt. You gotta hit him in the head with your butt. Better. You guys understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, uh, I have a, a student, some of you may have heard of, I don't know if you have or not. His name is John Valera. He was a world kata champion back in the day. He's now a movie stunt guy that, that, that uh, does choreography in films. Uh, the last one was uh, John Wick 3. He did that. Uh, and I got to see him in it. So I'm you know, watching the movie. He's in the movie. Sir. He's in the movie. He, he, he's in all kinds of movies, but you don't usually see him. He's the guy that gets knocked. Like, uh, did you guys see Wolverine? So, yes, sir. Which one? Sir. <laughs> the, uh, Wolverine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, on the top of the train with the knives in the. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he get, I saw him get killed in the same movie three times. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him because I raised him. All right, so, but, you know, it, it had like, what is it, like 20 Asian guys running all around in, in black jackets and black sunglasses, right? So at that, you know, at that rate of speed or whatever, they're, they're counting on the fact that you wouldn't know who it was. But if you had a hood on, I'd know who it was. You see, know, that's all you all right, so let's do that again. So one, everybody, two, three, four. All right now, five. You guys saw the Rocky movies. Where you need to grab from the hook punch. All right, the, the bungee cord is attached to this side, so you're going to throw your hip that way. All right, and, and scrunch up on the side side. Ready? Go. Yes, sir. All right, other direction. Go. Good, now react. This is what you got to do. Okay, let's do your grandma's house. She's crazy. And she took her iron and went, There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, Grab your abdomen and throw your butt in the air. Four. Five. Six. Okay, that's the basic understanding of reaction. Um, now, in most martial arts, we, well, all, all of them, I would imagine, you work on falling, correct? Sir, sir. Anybody here never fall, taken a fall before? Exactly. So you know, you know, um, rudimentary skills there. Now I prefer not to do it on this, uh, just for safety's sake, but you're going to have to. So we're going to have to do it kind of slowly. Um, actually, we won't. We won't do it. We don't have the space or time for that. All right, so we're going to do a little bit of stretching to work on our caving mount. Now that's your warm-up to understand for later in the class, if you're the one on the recipient end of the strikes. All right? So, um, I remember seeing a movie where the, the, the bad guy was running down the street from a, from a cop and the other cop was uh, opening a car door and he just did a ridge hand and the guy did a backflip and landed on his face, right, off of the ridge hand. Now the actor only straightened his arm, but everybody in the theater was like, God, you see what he did? It's like, yeah, I saw what the stuntman did. Right? The guy did a backflip and landed in a, in a plank. Right? Yeah. Pretty cool. Um, one of the guys from... Uh, Jason, where you at? Yeah. Oh, there he is. Uh, one of the guys, well, from, well, I don't know if it was from you or if it was from Scott, but it was the guy that did the trailer for the movie we're doing now. He did that for me. Okay. I did a front kick at his head, and he did that flip and landed on the back. Oh, you want him to do that? Yeah, come on. Yeah, <laughs> um, I don't remember the kid's name. Okay, yeah, short, stocky. Yeah, look cool. Maybe you were. Oh, I just like lay down and roll. I'm about to roll. 
and let people go and pee. Right, we'll get a little bit on some hip flexibility now when we, when we get into it. Everybody squat in our horse stance. Take your elbows and push your knees back like you're trying to make your knees touch behind you. If you can do that, then join the surface. <laughs> Right, you can rock back and forth a little bit too, but not too fast. Now, I'm going to drop to this side so you guys can, it's my left leg, it's your right leg. Put your hands on the floor, straighten this leg. We're all going that way. Oh, yeah. I'm doing a mirror image. Now, on this foot, point your toes in the air. So you're stretching your biceps and more, so the back of your leg. Now, you want to turn that down and back. So you're working on rotating that hip. Now, watch here. Big toe and knee go that way, like a side kick, and then front. Yeah. There you go. Aha. All right, we got two sides. Drop to the other side. Both feet are flat. Left toes and knee. Left toe down. Air. And down. Air. Down. Good. Now, you're going to take a seat. So take the pressure off your hips. And straight the feet uh, in a, a bit of a split. Don't do your maximum split yet. <coughs> so, uh, if you want to move forward, you can. You got to spread it a little bit. Now, your back is straight. So you grab your hands. You want to rock elbow to knee. One side to the other. All right, now we're going to scoot a little bit farther. We're going to go hand to foot and just rise. Working our lower back a bit too. All right, now, um, guys, why do we kick? Everybody just relax for a second. Put your hand there. Why not just punch? Well, we got more range. Right. Right, exactly. Because you have reach. Kicks are long range weapons. You get closer, you got hands, you get, closer, you get closer still, elbows, knees, and rest. So understanding those ranges and appropriate use is, uh, we all do the same thing. Uh, all of us have, have had a niche as far as what we were doing teaching. Um, so my thing today is to try to do something slightly different from what everybody else has done, uh, just to give you a different way of thinking about things. But from a combative standpoint, um, pers personally, I like kicking people in the head. Makes me feel good. I can't say the same for them, <laughs> but I like it. Yes, and if people ask me for my autograph, I get going to take it. So that's kind of cool. Now, I'm going to turn this foot down, lay on this leg over here. So your toes are up on this one. As you're working those hips again, that's real important to have hip mobility when you kick because you want to have full range of motion and you want to have options. Oh. I want to be able to kick in different directions. You have more tools than your shoulder does. That make sense? All right. Toes up over here, toes down over here. Lay on this way. All right, sit up. Now, scoot a little farther. All right, now take both big toes and point them toward me. Take both big toes and point them away from me. Down. 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 And over. Like that. Just rock it. Just flap your feet. Now, some of the kids can just do that kind of thing. My understudy can do that. Mr. Thomas, one of them. Come over here and just go. Just drop it. Oh. There you go. Good oh. man. Something like that, Ian. Now, it's been a minute since you've done this. We're going to have to get you some new, new gi pants. You're going out of them. There you go. All right, so these people I know fairly well. <laughs> He's been doing karate since he was one. She's been with me on and off for 46. Four? Four? Five. 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 Somewhere in there. Okay. All right, everybody up on your feet. Sit together. <laughs> All right, you'll go back to where you were for a minute. All right, now, uh, put your best leg forward. The, the five seconds. Yeah, I don't care if it's left or right. You can be your foot. So you're, you want to kick with your left foot. 
sir. Okay, good. You want to kick in your right? As in, yeah. As in, take yes, one. Sir. I don't care which one. It's, it's, yeah. Now, um, the methodology that I'm going to show you is, is my method that, that I borrowed literally from Bill Wallace. Because um, when I was a teenager, I saw him fight on a TV show called Water World of Sports. <coughs> Excuse me, and knocked this guy out with, with a, a front leg round kick, and I thought, I have to be able to do that. So I started copying him. Right? So I'm going to show you the, the things that make that work. Now, um, now I'm not going to pick on anybody's style or whatever, but I'm going to explain to you a couple of things. If we've never fought before, I know you're not going to punch from that position because you got your weight on your back leg. Mm -hmm. Right? So I know he's going to kick with it. Likewise. That must be from the same place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that just a little bit. What I want you to do is be in a horse stance, the weight's equal. Now watch. From a karate standpoint, you guys are saying back stance, horse stance, front stance, right? Yes, sir. So you're driving the car. Forward, neutral, reverse. Make sense? Yes, sir. So from a neutral position, with my weight equal, I'm going to, I, I should be able to kick with either foot. As opposed to going, hey, get ready, and we'll kick you with this foot. You understand? Yes, sir. If I shift back, I'm telling you what I'm going to do before him. Now, you know I'm not going to kick with this foot, I'm standing on it. Mm -hmm. If I pick this one up, I'm going to fall down. I'm not going to punch this way, because if I punch this way, don't fight me. <laughs> Take me to the zoo. <laughs> you understand? Yes, so my weight's going to be equal. So what I'm going to do from here, I'm going to bring my feet together like a jumping jack, right? So all my weight is supposedly centered, but really I got my weight on my right foot. So my hip is shifted enough. So I want to be able to pick this knee up without moving my head. So I shift, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do before. I'm going to shift here, and then pop. Woo! Oh, so can you go a little faster, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, go through his head force. <laughs> All right, so we're going to work on that for a second. Now, what I want you to do is this. Since kicking higher may be, uh, depending on the person's flexibility, difficult, everybody here ought to be able to kick to the, to the belly button without moving their head. All right? So we're going to bring feet together, pop. Feet together, pop, just like that. Got it? So sure. practice that, go. Now, notice I took a step. You took a step? Yep. Step. 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 Go. Yes, sir. Go. Put your toes back. Not this way. Very good. Now stop for a second. Now a couple of you are seeing something. Nowadays, everybody watch the UFC. They'll go to Walmart to buy a tap out shirt that's two sizes too little. You know, walk around sheets with the tucker inside. Because they're fighters. You know what I mean? Everybody watches that show, thinks they're a wrestler. Now, kicking is real good because I get to stay back here. Kicking is bad because you can grab my foot. So, what do you got to do? Kick recovery. For two reasons. Number one, I like it back here. You understand? Yes, sir. How tall are you? Uh, five, seven. Okay, I'm five, nine, so it's not that much difference. But now there's a lot of difference. Make sense? Sir. Okay. Sure. Okay. So now, another thing I see people do. You know, I have, I don't know, 500 trophies. All of them. And this guy on. <laughs> How many of you guys have this, this trophy? Mm -hmm. right? yes, Who right. talked about a king? Yeah. Right? But really don't stick your butt out when you kick. Have your back straight, have both legs straight so you can have a distance between you and them. Make sense? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And then pull your foot back. Yes, also, I don't want to kick and stumble forward. You understand? I want to maintain my range. So I'm doing my kick, whatever it is, I'll stay back here. I'll stay back here. It's nice back here. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes, sir. Alright, so you skip right for right now, we're establishing this motion here. Kick and look. Now when we're sparring. The idea is I'm going to kick you right on the knot of your belt. Guys, if you get kicked there, what are you going to do? You're going to think you got kicked on the groin. Now you're going to drop your hands. So keep pecking at your belt. Pop. Then you go, I didn't get kicked in the stomach. Okay, you're right. Make sense? Yes, sir. Sorry. All right, kick to the stomach without moving your head. Go. Don't hold your breath. 
Was a side kick. My, you see, the, the ground kick was Bill Wallace's preference back in the day. But Bill Wallace was a very muscular middleweight. I remember seeing him as a teenager thinking there's no way he's a middleweight. He was too big. He was, you know, he's 170, but his upper body looked like he had to be at least 200. You guys seen uh, uh, George St. Pierre? That was Bill Wallace's body when I was a teenager. He looked like that. He was a beast. And, and could hit very hard. Ask my student bar kick where you can Anyway, so for me, as a super lightweight, because I was 140, to go to a tight circle, I would establish side kick. Tight. Yeah, okay. Boom. Boom. See that nudge? Mm -hmm. I like that. Once he starts preparing for it, just change direction. Just change direction. Make sense? Yes, sir. Yeah. Go ahead and your face hands. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes, sir. This way. We'll put it somewhere. Nice. Now, I'm 62. How old are you? 24. Same one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like you to like to stand block me. <laughs> I like you to <laughs> You know, the best way to deal with that? Be here. Mm -hmm. Either next zip code? Yeah. 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 Either, yeah. either be a runner, but don't try to stand and block. Because for me, how many of you guys have done this at Spawn before? Okay, I'm going to fight this guy. I go to throw something and he blocks it. Block the window. I hate that. I all the trouble of putting my leg up and blocking it. I know. I do the exact same thing from the exact same distance at the exact same angle, but I'll do it harder. <clears throat> so you can block it the exact same way. Twice in a row. I know. I'll do it harder. That'll fix everything. You guys have seen that happen? Yes, sir. Right. It's harder. It's harder. Now, just change direction. Watch this. Watch what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do. Now you make them think you're going to do one thing and then do something else. Nobody wants to get hit twice with the same thing. Hurts, makes you look stupid. All right? Yes, sir. <laughs> so, if we're fighting, what? I was running, that's better. <laughs> Does that make sense to you? Yes, sir. Okay. I can so, feel you coming towards me. Yeah, that's because I'm aggression. <laughs> So, we're going to establish the one kick, either side kick or friendly round kick, low, with enthusiasm. Yes, sir. Right? right. Push your guard. Double time. Boom. Boom. Thank you. Make sense? Yes, sir. All right, try that. Good stiff side kick, and then pick your knee up like they're a fire hydrant. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then... Whoosh, there's a hook kick. Right? Sir. Try it. Go. You gotta let me think of these sides. I'm sorry. Yeah. Alright, sir. Yep. Yeah, you got a bad situation already. She just got out of the home and dropped the situation. No, it's okay. You got, I gotta get your kids getting hit in the face. It's gonna so happen. Okay, now the kicking, everybody, uh, try to keep at least one eye open. Yeah. What is it? Tell her, keep at least one eye open. Yes. <laughs> she went to the Steve Wonder School karate. Better. Now keep your elbow tight. Let me put you. All right. I'm going to go in a straight line. See, there should be any gap. You see the flex? That's what I'm going to call it. We're here. Next time, menace. And there's the gap. 
Yes, sir. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Because you did three in a row, which you had that youthful enthusiasm. And I'm trying to be sneaky. Yes, sir. That makes sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, if you're doing a double kick, <coughs> if you're doing two, which one do you hit hard with? Second. 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 You can't hit. You're kidding me. Because if I kick him too hard with the first one, I'm going to lose my balance and he's going to be too far away and then I do the second kick. Okay? Yes, sir. So the first one is to establish precedent. Right. Got here, buddy. Go. Next time. Smack. Smack. Make sense? Yes, sir. All right. So you can use any of these combos. Use that. Flip kick here, double flip kick. You can do side kick, side kick flip, side kick hook, and whatever combo you want. Okay? So you're bouncing, relaxed. Now think about your leg like if you take a towel and roll it up and snap it. You guys know high school locker room stuff. All right? Roll it up and snap it. You can't go oh, and try to muscle your way through it. It won't work. Get that? Right, yes. Double flip kick. Side kick. Okay. Now, chase up. Not slow. Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically it. He said. It'd be a pretty good one, though. All right, fighting team. Yeah, you can give me. You got it. Tips loose and that kind of thing. You can use uh, it, my seminar is more extensive as far as how to hit people with kicking that way. The idea is how to not let them see it. Now, the problem is on film, that's not what you want. That's why Van Damme looked better than Chuck Norris on film. In real life, Chuck Norris would kill him. Right? Uh, uh, Don Wilson, you guys. Uh, your instructor talked about Don Wilson going up with him, right? Yes, sir. On film, he doesn't look as good as he is in real life because he doesn't telegraph. It's hard for a fighter to telegraph. Make sense? Yes, sir. And that's what I was doing with you guys. You're not telegraphing. So if it's a film, you got to see it. Right? That's why Van Damme uses large sweeping motions that look better on film. Right? And the stunt guys have the appropriate reaction. Make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. So, now I'm going to do. Uh, you're going to do that number two reaction, and you're going to spin all the way that way and look at him off of the hook. So he's going to exaggerate the kick. He's up real high and push. Make sense? Yes, sir. That was good. Right, you guys see see what I'm doing? Yes, sir. Now I'm throwing the kick at a distance to where I'm not going to hit him. Right? Now, the first film that we did, uh, Master, Grandmaster Rankin was, was uh, played my, my teacher in that film, and we had guys that were good, some people, then we had guys that showed up. Now, one of the guys... I, but at least I showed up. <laughs> <laughs> I would have put you. Um, but one of the guys, see, the idea was this. He was supposed to run at me and stop on this mark. If you do that... Stop right there. Yes. Boom, and I front kick him and he go farm. And I told him to stop on that spot. And I said I wouldn't hit him. He kept it. He's like, I don't want to hit you. He kept doing it, it's like, okay. Pass the line. Pass the line. 
boom! So I hit him. He landed in the dog where she is. Um, all the other stunt guys, I think they might have been there, up in the woods. Yes. Yeah. You remember the speech? Yes. Yeah. And all the guys over on the side went, ooh! <laughs> the next time that he did the run, he went, <laughs> right. Well, yeah, but if he listened the first time, he, he went where he was and he was good on film. We left it in the film. Isn't that hard? Yes. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Like John Wayne said, life is hard, life is hard, and we Alright, thanks. Alright, partner up. Find somebody of similar. Well, you don't have to have similar guys. Find a, find a partner. Preferably, you guys work well. This is okay. You and me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, come here. Flying yes. stance. Now, put your left side. All right, now, you're going to do, everybody's watching the choreography here, right? I'm going to do a punch and a kick, and you're going to do an inside block with that left hand. The other left hand. Right. Here I come. Boom. There you go. Go. Boom. Now you're going to do a low block with the same hand. Boom. Now you're going to step up and back fist smith. Now you're going to flip kick me in the face. You guys understand? Yes, sir. All right. So one of you is attacking, the other one's defending. This is a four count thing. So I'm going to go punch, and block it, block it, punch me, kick. Got it? All right. Now. Let's do this. Uh, Right-handed people, hand in the air. Everybody, pretty much. Okay. All right. Turn your belly that way. Now, uh, horse stance. Now you're gonna do inside block. I'm gonna do a ridge hand, and I'm gonna do a front hand. Boom, boom. Now bring your feet together, punch, and you kick. Nice. Let's do that. I want to have this side for this. It would be better for this angle. One, two, three, four. You guys understand it? Yes, sir. All right. So you got your partner. You're, you're the, the one doing what you just did. You do what I did. Okay, you got your partner. Go. All right. You guys understand what you're doing? Yes, sir. Start? Yeah, go. Right. Now, we're going to do this like a contest. Who's the better uh, hero of the movie and who's the better stunt person? Got it? Okay, practice. Go. Fight stance. Fight stance. No, with the other. Right. Ready? Step back. Go. Boom. Go. Boom. Back to this one. Okay. I can do that all back. Do it. Uh, punch for it. Punch. You gotta wait for your, you gotta wait for the person to react. Okay. Once. Two. Punch me. Kick. That's it. Now you practice that like Cotton, and I'm gonna go around and help you. Go. Inside, right? Yes.
first started doing it in my backyard, Bruce Lee, doing my cops. I had to turn four, he was going to His nerves will beat you up worse than anything else. Right? And y'all practice all you want, and then you put a camera on you, and it's worse. So what you do is you work it. Now, you may have been doing it for just a few minutes. But you worked on a fight like, like anybody see um, uh, Last Samurai? This Okay. The fight scene with, with Tom Cruise with the sword, they worked on that for six months. Mm -hmm. right. Just that one fight scene. So you know that the stunts will be on time and where they're supposed to be, and the camera guys are where they're supposed to be. That's a professional production. Does that make sense? Now, our first movie, the premise or anything I did, I had the choreography, as Jason can attest to you, I told them what to do when they showed up. We had no rehearsal. Well, what you don't understand is if I can kick you in the head, you know I'm kicking. 
So that rule worked real nice for me. I remember going for Grand Champion and kicked this guy three times in a row and going to his heavyweight. And uh, he, he never got close to me. Like, thank you for the trophies. <laughs> and I didn't get hit. Uh, I like jump away for yeah. yeah. Because if you're running at me and I kick you and jump and land out of the ring, I'm fighting you. Just, uh, I'm over here, you're there. You got to get down there. Yeah, you're good. Is that? Is that? Should we do this a point to leave in the ring, though? No, no, if you're fighting out. Now, if you, if you are running at me and I go and step out, that's playing chicken with wooden contact. Or if you run at me and I'm hitting, then that's, that's considered fighting out, so it's not okay. illegal. Right? But the kick would be you run at me, you go run at me. Boom, and I land over here out of the ring, I'm good. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Now, as a young black belt, how are you? Twenty-five, sir. Mm -hmm. I don't look it. I know. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, but Al's anyway. When I was eighteen, I looked, you know, fifty. But uh, fighting in tournaments against guys that played in the black belt division, especially back then, like ready to go, and they come at you like, you know, the human cannonball, and trying to kill you, right? So that jump away kick. The harder you run at me, the harder you run into my foot. And then the judge says, stop, and you're angry because you don't get to hit me. <laughs> right. I remember guys, I remember heavyweight guys would, would leave the ring going, you were stood still. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the point. Yeah. yeah. I hit you, you didn't hit me. It's, it's kind of frustrating when you put a jab like that. Yeah, days. absolutely. And I, I like doing that. All right, so I'm going to give you a few minutes now to come up with your own choreography using the information that we did. Right? Keep it short and simple because you don't you want to do it very long. But the main thing when you partner is remember the right angle at the right time. Make sense? All right, practice. Come around and help. You, sir. Fight stance. Ready? One, two, three, four, kick. Hop, hop. Got it? So it's supposed to be here, and what you do, what do you do? It's close, but you know it's coming, so, and I know where I'm putting So once I, once I do that hook and I come here, but I can't clear that hand, so I gotta have control, right? Here, clear that hand. So here, here it is. Ready? Right? Okay. So we're going here, okay? Okay, okay. 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 This one up, but I'm kicking, I'm kicking left leg. I'm kicking left leg. And five. Okay, everybody's gonna have to walk the floor. Alright, let's see, um, that's your partner? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's the name of your movie? I didn't. You said name of the movie? Triple Combo. Triple <laughs> Combo. <laughs> Scene one. Take one. Ready? Action. Peace. 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 
Good, you know? Now, um, did you have focus pads and all your practices? Okay. The first thing, the big touch contact. You, you did the... Uh, um, to the... Here. Side. Here. Oh, kick here. Go around here. Right. And then hook kick. Yes, sir. And jump front. Is that what it was? Yes, sir. Okay. They have focus pads so you can make contact with all of them. Mm -hmm. And you work with partner, like, like the first kick. Do the first one stop. There's that. They, you know, it's not rigging more, it's just kicking. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Second kick. Last one. And you fall. You yes. So I'm going to try to make him look like he did more than he did. <laughs> <laughs> and he did good. But if I did this, like, here's a bad stomach. Kick me. Beats. Beats. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 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 Great master. Absolutely. So there is extremely important value in learning what he's teaching right now from a true self-defense training standpoint. If we are training together and he makes a correct move based on my action that allows me to see what happens if I punch him low, for example, if I punch him low and he doesn't lean backwards, I'm actually seeing something that's not gonna happen in the street. So as my self-defense part, if I hit him, that tells me, oh, so his head could come down. So from a, we were just talking about this over here. Sport, self-defense focused. Both have value. You're getting a buffet of the best instruction out there. Yes. Right? And so this, I, I'm gonna take this back to my students, what you're doing today, and I'm gonna tell them, look, you all need to learn to play act better so that when we're training with each other, we're seeing the real responses on the street and can see a benefit from that so we can see what's next. Mm -hmm. So don't be closed-minded and see beyond what you're learning. I mean, you got, an, you got a, a legend in front of you when it comes to sports martial arts, sir. Legend, you need to take advantage of it. Thank you, Thank you sir. All right. Thank you. 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 <laughs> so it begins. What's the end of the movie? I have no idea. You guys want to go to the office? Yeah. We'll start. Give us more room. There you go. And that was it. Handcuff. I heard it. <laughs> my stomach, my core didn't pop, but okay. so it was my ass is That's it. Okay, get back. Get back. <laughs> okay, ladies, let's see what you got. Uh, uh, but, yeah, so, <laughs> but it didn't, have a lot, it didn't give people a lot of time for preparation. Go ahead. Good? 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 That's one of my um, one of my favorite techniques back in the day. Was to guard, it was like a turning lesson. Boom! Sticking with the reverse punch. Next time I'm gonna go and menace you with it. Typically a hand will drop. Right? Which opens up that. Right? Now you sell it. You am gonna dig with that. Right? Next time you're gonna She's going to pause those hands. <laughs> Boom. You understand? Yes, sir. Okay, but that would be in fighting. You didn't give her time to react. So you kick. That's correct. Yeah, so you got to sell. I mean, do your first thing. Do you have a lot? It was a. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. right. In between, give her time to go. And then you react to those kicks. Do it again, sir? Yes, please. One, two, 
Three. Now. Better. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. That way your partner, you're, 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 like if you're dancing, you're, you're leading and you're following. Make sense? Yes, sir. Give me a hand. Yeah, one more time. <laughs> now, um, you know Jim Carrey is, right? Yes, sir. The overact. Overact. Yes, sir. Go. <laughs> 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 you guys demo team together? <laughs> Same school? Yes, sir. Yeah, you should be. You should work on that. It's nice. Okay, I had a request from him. Can we do it, Dad? Can we do it? So we're going to do this. Just work on it. All right, you ready? Excuse me. Fight stance. You're fighting stance, too. I like that cool and confident. You don't have to do it. Are you ready? Spend a lot more. I can do. I can do a forty-five minute class just on stress. You guys understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that was kind of like, as we mentioned earlier, buffet style. Everything we did today, you look at all the classes. You get a little piece here. Like we had this thing we used to call pan We We can go in and you can, you can, it's, a, it's a cafeteria, right? So today was kind of like cafeteria style martial arts. You look at a little taste of this, a little taste of this. I like that. Uh, that's it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And what you got to do, the way I look at martial arts, it's like, you know, uh, um, you go to an event like this. I didn't, I got a suit to, uh, to the tux. But um, you go get a tux, they got to tailor it to you. So when you learn the martial art, you're learning it off the rack. But you got to figure out how, how it works for you. Because your physiology and anatomy and age and whatever is different from that young man back there, different from that young lady there. Everybody's different. Okay. Same information. You got tailored to work, you know, find what works for you. Right. Um, okay, questions. How did you increase your speed with your kicks? It's all done with mirrors. Um, <laughs> for practice. That's it. I, when I was, how old are you? I'm 14. About your age, a little younger, I, I saw this little Asian guy on t on, in movies. So I, I want to be like that guy. I want to do, do sit-ups to where my stomach looks like that guy. His name was Bruce Lee. You might have heard of him. Yeah. Um, but he's like, that's what I want for my life. I want to look like that. I want to move like that. So I started training in that direction. I, uh, we mentioned the term role model. I don't remember when. It was maybe last night. Or, yeah. at, at one point, we used that term. Everybody works off of history. Right? Like, like your instructor, his lineage and his history is where you're at. Make sense? Now for me, I had a great instructor. I've, had, I've been very lucky as far as instructors. Um, uh, they were all wonderful. Some of them were more famous than others, but the information was great. Um, but I copied other people. I want to look like Bruce Lee. I want to be built like Bruce Lee, so I started doing 500 sit-ups a day when I was your age. Right? I was a shy kid. If I wanted to, to, to meet a girl, I go to the pool and take my shirt off. They come and talk to me. Because nobody had that. You understand? And, and when I was a kid, since I didn't talk much, I found girls that talk a lot. Now I'm 
talk more than I did then. But you, you understand the process, mm -hmm. right? So there's residuals for being in good shape. Um, then I saw Bill Wallace kick on television. I thought, I have to be able to kick like that. So I started stretching and training to kick like him. I saw this other guy, Benny Arquitas. Some of you may have heard of him. Right? Benny the Jet. Um, he was a, a mean little junkyard dog that could knock somebody out with either hand or either foot. Now, in my evolution of martial art, well, for example, when I, when I was 18, I fought in this tournament in Lynchburg, Virginia, and this guy, Jerome Magic Johnson, was, was there. And that month, his picture, was a two-page picture in the middle of it, with him hitting somebody and the other guy going flying. So back in that time period, when you lined up side by side with people, whoever you stood beside is who you were going to fight. Right? Now, there were 30 guys in the weight division. Magic, like the line stopped here, Magic was about where you are. Now, you've probably heard that name. Yeah. Uh, I knew him back when he had a Jerry Curl. He doesn't have a hit now. Um, but he was that far away, and I thought, well, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to get a chance to fight one of these famous guys. So I walked over and lined up with him, and I fought him. I want to see what I can do with somebody like that. I found out. <laughs> yeah, he hit me with a jump spin sidekick off of a charge and folded me in half like a wallet. And it was like, Whoa! and at that age, it was like, I'm so glad that I did that many sit ups every day. And I went, I'll not hit the ground. I'll not let anybody know that I can't win. I thought, perhaps one day. <laughs> <laughs> and the center judge, Comes up and he goes, son, take all your time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look that terrible. Because he hit, he hit me. Uh, I don't. I haven't been hit that hard since. So I'll learn how to get out of the way better. All right. right. Necessity. Because getting hit changes your perspective. That's right. Right. Uh, after that, I started working on that jump spin kick, and people started calling me Magic Thomas because I was hitting people all the time. Because I found out. Did it work on me? It worked for me. Is that? Is that exactly. So I could have taken the tactic of oh, karate is not for me, I could get killed in this and quit. But instead, I gleaned a, a positive from it of knowing with conviction what it felt like to do. Yes, sir. So um, later, years later, I was fighting at this tournament in Richmond, my first national tournament that I, I won in the first place. And Magic came up to me and he goes, uh, we're doing this um, team fight on stage, uh, the best of the North versus the best of the South, and I'd be pleased that you fought on my team. So I went from being a novice kid who did his uh, field goal to fighting on a stage. I didn't know that was going to happen, but that was my evolution. Yes, sir. Make sense? Yes, sir. Uh, but he told me later, he was uh, impressed with me that I was the only one that stood up to him and fought him that day, because everybody else was, was you know, doing yeah, that good. I'd rather kick up. I, bet I would rather take a butt beating than bow out to you in the tournament. Yes, sir. That's just new. Make sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It would hurt worse if I went, oh, you know, mm -hmm. inside. Right. Um, and then Bill Wallace, uh, he was just at the school. <coughs> I started following him around doing seminars. Uh, and then we, we became friends. I worked out with him. Uh, we taught uh, seminars together. We taught on a cruise ship. That was pretty cool. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, you know, on a cruise ship, you got like 2,000 people on the ship, but we had about 100 karate people. It was myself, you know, you guys should think about doing karate cruise. I did that with okay. and What was the overall Not that one. It was me, it was Bill Wallace, it was my keto instructor, Bob was doing. It was Joe Hess and Bill Wallace. It's a lot of right there. Yeah, it's a fun year. It's a fun year. Chuck Norris wasn't there. I have met Chuck Norris. I don't know anything. Any questions about anything else? If I don't know an answer, I'll make something up for you. <laughs> yes, sir. When did you start your conditioning? Um, after my first class. Now, I... My, my story is, as one of you guys said, oh, it was you, you have asthma. Right? I had severe asthma as a kid. When he was uh, uh, 
uh, before he was born, that was my biggest concern is that he was going to end up like I was. I was a seven pound, or seven month, four pound baby uh, back in the late 50s, right? So uh, in two, in, it was fourth and fifth grade, third or fourth or something like that, I had a homebound teacher, you know, they have homeschool. I had that because I was missing half a year of school because my health was so bad, right? So when I started martial arts, my mother actually forbid me to do it. She was scared I was going to be killed. My instructor, the first day I took class, when I, I asked him at the end of class, how long is it going to take me to get my black belt? Because that's the white belt thing to ask, right? Yeah. Yes, he sir. laughed and walked away. <laughs> he later told me that he figured I was going to die the first week of class. <laughs> yeah, true story. But I was his first black belt. Now after three years of classes, I, I got uh, strep. I was sick, real sick, couldn't get out of bed. So when I came back to class, I missed two classes. So he goes, I was going to send flowers to your house, I figured you died. Because I was dedicated enough to I just didn't miss. Right. You yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I, I personally feel that because of being sick as a kid, that since I was used to being uncomfortable, that it made me a black girl. Because I had guys who were healthy, strong, muscular guys that uh, quit because they didn't have the heart. And I, and I was, guys, imagine having a flu for 15 years. That's the way I was as a kid. So when I started karate, you know, I was wheezy. We had two hour classes with a 10 minute break in between. That 10 minute I would spend over the toilet uh, letting go of whatever I even would have thought about it. For my first year, I went home with a bloody nose every class because I got blocked with my face. Yeah, back in that time period, sparring gear was optional. You don't recommend that, sir? I don't. <laughs> Um, <laughs> as a green belt, my instructor, and I, asked, I told him I was a kickboxer. The video of boxing gym fits. So I started doing that, and then they told me it was okay to shift and get out of the way, and I thought, oh, that's not one minute. Okay. Last question, anybody? Sir? I understand. But that's fine. Okay, one more thing. Um, Yes. <laughs> How do you include mixed martial arts into your sparring environment? The thing that I've gleaned from it is that those guys are, are more conditioned than your typical traditional martial arts person. So working heavy conditioning, running, weightlifting, etc. Uh, that's the thing, that's the biggest thing that, that martial that mixed martial arts has contributed to us. Right, is you got to you got to be in good shape, right? Um, philosophically, it's a sport. This it's not a martial art. It's a sport. Does that make sense? We have a history and a lineage and and, and, and um, um, heritage, legacy that, that they don't possess. Right? But as far as pure athleticism, if you don't you know pay attention to their talk. Then there's a bunch of good things that we do. The ground stuff. Um, that's wonderful. Right? That's one of the first things that you understand is you're adding that to your arsenal, knowing how to do that. Uh, I wrestled in high school before I did karate and I, I boxed. Kids didn't want to come to my house because they didn't really get much. Because being a little small, unhealthy kid, I didn't want to be a little small, unhealthy kid. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I'll be around if you want to ask. Hey guys, I got the opportunity to catch up with Senior Master Thomas. I am so excited. He had a great seminar going on. So Senior Master Thomas, tell me a little bit about the martial arts that you teach. Uh, yeah, it's an eclectic system. The system is called American Freestyle Karate. I have black belts in seven systems, and my original art was Shotokan Karate, but prior to that, I boxed and I wrestled and all that. And then after that, I got into kickboxing. Uh, I trained with Joe Lewis, who is World Heavyweight Kickboxing Champion, and a good friend of mine. It's a great loss to the martial arts in the past. Um, and I've trained with, uh, in the Junri system with Taekwondo, so that's another one of the black belts. So, what we teach is, is like a steal from everybody that you know, something was good and then try to you know, incorporate that into what we do. Right. Okay, great. So how long have you been doing it? Uh, I started in martial arts in 1975. 
1975. Yeah. Okay. And how do you promote um, respect within the classroom? Uh, we teach life skills to the kids. Our school, the, the school has gotten younger and younger over the years. When I opened my school, basically there was a lot of 18 to 35 year old guys that like to kick and punch each other with enthusiasm. But as, as, as I've gotten older, the school has changed to where, you know, I've had handicapped students, um, elderly people. My oldest student I ever had was 81. Uh, I have a student that is, it's, um, has his own school that's in a wheelchair. He has cerebral palsy. So I've, I've learned how to adapt what we teach to, you know, to fit the physicality of the individual. But over the years, the martial arts have gotten younger and younger, mm -hmm. uh, hence my little boy right. started when he was a baby. I can honestly say that this is my first conference, and I was very surprised to see as many adults as I did, because I would think martial arts and young kids. So hence, my next question would be, how, what would you do to make sure that your classroom style is tailored to the younger students? Well, to make it entertaining and fun and fast-paced. You don't spend too much time lecturing or talking because you'll put them to sleep. So what I do is I'll, I'll sweat them, and, and then I'll set them down and then give them a life lesson about what we did. Like, okay. um, you know, sticking to something even if it's hard. Okay. Uh, or respect, you know, being, one of the, one of the things, you know, we have these uh, words for each belt level. Like the first one is respect, mm -hmm. which is what they have to memorize is be nice to people and things. So what do you mean by being nice to things? Well, that means respecting your property and other people's property. Right. Treat people like you want to be treated. So we have these um, life lesson speeches in the class that go along with the physicality. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. You've been a great interview, and hope, hopefully I can take some of the techniques I've learned from your seminar back with me and properly ask Mr. E. Give me some more background on it, perhaps. Absolutely. Yeah, thank I'm you glad, so much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yes, sir. All right.